And obviously, as you would expect, everything is about Ireland. Bang at it! Is the uh, headline. Focus to Ireland demolish off-colour Scots in Rugby World Cup opener. Bock bounce, raise, uh, sorry, Razzy eyes a win, not Ireland. So he's obviously not talking about uh, Ireland just yet. And Liverpool stay five clear with Chelsea win. Liverpool were impressive. They're, they are impressive at this stage. I didn't think they were impressive yesterday, no, but um, obviously the fact that they won is what matters. It could have been three or four in the first half, though. Uh, it could have, but, you know, as I said, they obviously they, it, it hinged on that VAR decision. And uh, before that as well, Chelsea missed a great chance. I thought Salah was very poor. Um, he was taken off. I think he was given pretty poor ratings by uh, uh, the, the various journalists. But he, he was, you know, the second half he was very frustrating because he just he just kept giving the ball away basically. And uh, Liverpool they weren't they weren't great, but they got the job done. The 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 Indo is uh, in with a shout, which is you know probably we don't want to be getting too high about beating Scotland, but we are. We look like we have a chance again all of a sudden. There'll be no hype. Re well, there, I don't think there's going to be any hype until the week of the South Africa game. Yeah, right? but oh. up until then, people will start thinking we we actually like South Africa aren't unbeatable. You know, they. I, I thought watching them against New Zealand, I thought Ireland won't be petrified by look, watching this. Should also just mention the end on page two and three. It's like Irish display wins hearts and minds both on and off the pitch, and it's like we're already patting ourselves in the back for being the best bunch of lads ever, basically. But apparently, the Jaffs love us. Uh, okay, so the you have got the Irish Independent. You've already done that one. Uh, the Times, their sports section. It's a picture of it's Jacob Stockdale surging through and missing uh, Connor Murray over his shoulder. Poor Connor Murray made yeah, two, two amazing trade lines in the first half, and um, both both times he was ignored. Liam Toland was picking it out a fair bit in the the air commentary. Um, he's uh, Liam Toland's a very interesting call commentator because he kind of. I, I wasn't sure who he was because it never, but his chats with Conor Morris are more like, really? Do, do you reckon? Like, so they kind of have this strange dynamic, but uh, quite entertaining. Yeah, I definitely, I, that's where I watched it as well. Yeah. I chose to watch that. Uh, Springboks on horizon after clinical display. Everybody's talking about it. I thought um, Joe Schmidt afterwards was uh, more giving than I've seen him in post-match in a long time. Like, a, a great burden had been released and he was also now happy to engage on a proper level yeah no no bullshit no phoniness no why is I'm, that i'm pretending it's because it's coming to the end yeah and it's like you can't you can't like everybody knows what's happening yeah we've just beaten scotland the rest of the group is going to be relatively straightforward for us now it's posing about, for a selfie with a fan there it's about avoiding have, yeah uh, it's about avoiding injury at this point. Yeah, um, but uh, it was interesting that Owen said, you know, that he entertained the notion of, of uh, the South Africa game because that, that is, a, is a little bit of a break from the norm. Yeah. Uh, the, the racing post as well is uh, Golden Boy, Henderson, Eyes, Gold Cup for Superstar, Altior. Um, I don't know, yeah, these stories, I, I'm always a bit wary of them. You go into them and it's like, because Altior has been the best, one of the best two miles of all time and now it's like, uh, you know, but he, he kind of, I think he had a press opening day yesterday where he entertained the notion of stepping him up and trip, but I don't think we're going to see him in the Gold Cup. How far is the Gold Cup? Three and a bit? Three, two and a half. Um, Wales versus Georgia then. Uh, Georgia can make favourites struggle in tricky conditions. Uh, that's the, so you, you mentioned the, you know, it, it, the, the betting on the rugby is obviously there's so many lopsided games that um, it's kind of hard to know what the angle is. Like even when I had a bet on England in the handicap yesterday, they still had to win by like 46 or something, yeah. which they didn't. No, um, uh, sometimes it's the opening matches of the tournament where... A bit cagey as well. And yeah, I think the, the, there's probably a thing that the, uh, the poorer teams will fade out in the second half of games after putting in a huge shift. You saw that Russia against Japan and... But um, the size of some of the Tonga lads yesterday against England, bloody! I think the pack, the pack difference was something like ten percent more in terms of weight. In the in, um, but anyway, the back page of the Times, uh, London edition, is Ferguson inspires England. Eddie Jones said that his England team were inspired in part by a recent visit to their training camp by Alex Ferguson as they scored a late try opening in their opening 35-3 win against Tonga. England hadn't been expected to be troubled by Tonga, but with time running out, they'd still only scored three tries and were one short of the bonus point. Bonus points obviously going to be important in uh, that group mm. and the front of their football 
uh, is going backwards. And it's two, it's the Man United centre-backs with their head in their hands. United lose 2-0 at West Ham, prompting Mourinho to claim they're worse now than when he was sacked. Uh, he might be right. Um, you know, Sunis and Roy Keane in the studio for Sky yesterday. He, yeah, I, I um, couldn't really, I think, I think we were just heading out to our new home in Dorky at that time, but I, I did see them, I couldn't actually watch them on live, but um, they looked, they looked for all, they, they all looked very sour actually, they didn't look that happy about life, but um, hammered in the sun. Legends lay into Ole's woeful United and um, Fringe Festival, Conway, I don't like critics, I love them. Andrew Conway reckons Ireland's fringe players answer the critics after a thumping win. Which is quite interesting because the fringe players had a huge role to play and Ireland didn't look any, Ireland didn't really look any worse for the players that were missing in a way, I thought. Yesterday, no. No. But you could, you, you would be pretty excited about the fact that we're getting some of them back. Just like Carberry, like Carberry, where's he going to fit in? You know, and well, you get Jack Carty's spot, but Carty, yeah. when he come on, Carty was excellent. You know, and um, I, I thought Chris Farrell was probably playing himself into the team because yeah, Josh Schmidt likes himself a bit of Chris Farrell. He likes the size and scale and, and opportunity that he he provides, yeah. and even when things were hairy in the second half, he had to pack down in the scrum for a while. Yeah. I was like, I could do that. No yeah. Problems. No I, big deal. There was it was a ten out of ten in terms of what Ireland would have wanted from that game, pretty much. Yeah, the the injuries aren't bad. That's yeah. the, the main thing. Obviously, with the one proviso that we don't know what the story is with Johnny Sexton, uh, the Daily Mail best in show, and it's uh, teammates hail efforts of Irish captain and route of Scots and David's a doubt for double header. This is not good news though. Uh, slightly under the radar while Ireland were. Winning in the rugby is the news that David McGoldrick is an injury concern for Mick McCarthy. He missed Sheffield United's 2-0 win at Everton with a tweet groin sustained while doing extra shooting practice. Everything else uh, is good though on that front in that um, we might have a chance to talk about this later but things are looking much better for the Irish football team I think you know and Sean Maguire scored again. Um, I'll read this. Yeah. As options. Sean Maguire is fit, while uncapped duo Aaron Connolly and Richard Sadler are pushing for a call-up. Yeah, that was... Uh, Sadler's going to be like, right, yeah. wow. First of all, he I know, was I know Mick likes me. Yeah, second of all, he can't move anymore. Um, but of course, it's Kieran Sadler, ex Sligo Rovers and Cork City, who scored for Doncaster at the weekend. Um, Ryan Manning played again for QPR there, up to fourth, I think, or fifth in the championship. Preston are third. And um, Aaron Connolly... Came off the, the boy from scored. Galway, Ryan Manning's neighbour. Um, unbelievable technique. I don't know how he didn't score. Shar, of course, who was playing for uh, the Swiss against us, uh, clearing off the line. But Connolly and Troy Parrott, basically, in, to my mind, have to be in the senior squad for our, our upcoming games. Yeah, you're of the view that age doesn't matter. I mean, I, I would like Connolly and Parrott to be options off the bench if need to be. And yeah. if McGoldrick's not playing, Obviously, that makes it more of a pressing case. Big controversy in the League of Ireland, though, with the 14-year-old playing for Bowles or being in the dressing room. Yeah, uh, I don't know what to make of that. Shouldn't, shouldn't happen. He's 15 next month. Does that make any difference? No. Um, too soon. The Guardian, uh, Chelsea won, Liverpool 2. Klopp's team see out nervy win and keep up their perfect start to campaign. And England need Fergie time. I don't know, the Ferguson thing, do they need Fergie to help them beat Tonga? Conor Murray inspires Ireland to a bonus point victory over sluggish Scotland that leaves Gregor Townsend's men under pressure. Scots look pretty screwed now. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I mean, if you are Scotland and you know you're going in against a quarter-final against either the Springboks or New Zealand, like that game like yesterday didn't really matter that much. You just need that team to peak in four weeks' time. They did not, though. Would you not prefer to...? I think that like, if you're Scotland, you're getting beaten anyway, right? Unless you pull out some weird, fluky situation like they nearly did the last time. Mm. It was Australia in the quarter-final the last time mm. where they got absolutely destroyed by a yeah. refereeing decision and... I was disappointed in Scotland and I know I, I'd say Alan Quinlan might argue that it was more to do with Ireland playing very well and but Scotland just got no change out of our line whatsoever and I thought their expansive game um, never really took off. I mean, they, 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 they barely had one try chance in the whole game. Yeah, yeah they, they weren't exactly uh, under our post but then... Uh, the, there was one mistake that we end up hacking down the field, and, and that was that was a ball. yeah that was very that was very fortunate. To be you know, and that, and that kills the game. Yeah, yeah. At that point, they're like, if they get a score, it gets back to close. Pierre Le Feu, Not many people were paying too much attention to Tim on Arsenal yesterday, but they grounded out against Villa with a late win, and uh, it seems like it was a bit of a cracker. Three two for uh, Arsenal, and uh, difficulties well, now for it, Villa at the bottom of the table. It's kind of yeah, it's kind of mad the Premier League in that um, you know you're looking at. 
the, the, the so-called big teams and you're thinking like Man United beaten, Chelsea beaten, Arsenal obviously pulled it out but I don't know if there's any sort of, apart from the top two finishing first and second which I think everyone agrees they will, it's fairly hard to call after that. I mean I wouldn't really bank on any of them finishing in the, in the Champions Before, League spots. No. Probably Arsenal should be okay. But. Last few uh, headlines for you, the star, Ole Bad Show. I don't get it. Is there? Am I missing something? I might be. Yeah. Uh, Jose and Keane batter Solskjaer and Joey will be a perfect ten. Joey Carby is primed to be unleashed at number ten. Now has a World Cup showdown with host nation Japan with Johnny Sexton taking a back seat. And then the mirror is the same stuff. Uh, so bad it's scary. No leaders, no quality, no desire. Legends Keane and Jose shocked at how awful United have been under Ole. I don't think I don't think you can call Jose Mourinho a Man United legend. In fact, I know you can't. He's a legend and he was with Man United, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, the, the Herald, um, Joe Brace for Bach Battle. He warns of South Africa challenge. So Schmidt has obviously thought about this, where he's like, he's made a conscious decision that I will talk about South Africa and potentially playing them. Um, interesting one here, Con on the double for Kula. Uh, Willow Callahan and uh, I actually put up a tweet last night and then just went to bed. And you wake up and it's like, the debate has happened and you've had no input because you've just basically have been asleep or watching Marcella. Um, but Same thing. Well, Con on the drop for Cool Enemy in the hurls. He's just see, they've managed to get a, a photo of him here where his hurl is unbelievably obscured. Either that or it's not in his hands. But I did notice in Docky yesterday all the people go around in cooler jerseys. There you go. Yeah. Everyone likes a winner. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of a snide remark there. What? Everyone likes a winner. They do. Imploring them, implying that they're bandwagon. No, not at all. Everybody likes a winner, that's it, you know. Uh, we've got to take a quick break. We'll be back talking Kula and Conor Callan a little bit later on. 